this is the Wikiposse uh, meta project Lionsburg call for uh, May 20th. And I just kind of recapitulated a bunch of stuff uh, that's already on the um, uh, HackMD. Um, uh, let me also turn on the transcript. Uh, I realized why I hadn't turned on the recording yet. It's because I think I've got extra stuff on my screen that I don't want on the recording. Um, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful as I uh, move around the screen. But that's fine. Um, so Jordan, does that make sense? Does that sound yeah, like we're yeah. in the right direction? Yep, um, yep. I just added a couple of those history notes into the so. So to make some quick observations, Jordan already writes um, in a fairly structured style that's close to Markdown. It's not exactly Markdown. Um, he's been picking up a little bit of Markdown in HackMD. Um, I, I don't have any concern that he's going to be able to, you know, to keep developing that. Mark, Markdown is not that many, many things deep. Um, and Jordan's gonna pick it up really easily. Um, the other thing that Jordan does that's different than most people is he puts uh, important words in single square brackets already. So um, I'm kind of hoping that we can leverage that a little bit to turn that into um, uh, wiki links. Uh, wiki links in Markdown wikis is double square brackets. Um, there's there's a, a difference between the way um, Jordan is thinking about important words and pages, but it may actually not be that different, especially if he's working in a wiki that's kind of the Jordan wiki about how, um, you know, his writings would fit, his important words would be good wiki pages. Um, his important words wouldn't be good wiki links in all the kinds of wikis we might want. Um, so another thing is, um, Um, what would you call uh, Pete, would, would, would that be, we're almost talking about like a, uh, a sen is that is like a syntax of how we're going to write a little bit what we're talking about here? Uh, yeah, um, to, to put a finer point on it, I would actually call it a semantics instead of a syntax. Um, in, in technical terms, I apologize for being technical. Syntax is usually like the the signs and symbols you use and semantics is, is more about the meaning. Um, okay. So the syntax of a wiki link, I would say is a double square brackets. And then the semantics of it is what do you put in a wiki link and what makes a good page title? Um, so a set of important words like Jordan uses is a good semantic vocabulary or semantic language to use, but there are, are other ones um, and other ones are probably better for like a collaborative knowledge base or something like that, a, a slightly different semantic um, uh, standards that semantic language uh, would be better. Um, a, uh, Just to make a quick comment, like for, for the others on the call, I've also been thinking about ultimately how to take some of these, this more structured writing and parallel it in um, in a mathematical language to help get through the problem of, of meaning in different languages. Um, so Pete and I have had side conversations about things like I believe it's TLA plus and different different ways to mathematically represent the meaning that you're trying to get across with a series of English words. And I, I have like a little bit of an intuitive sense that when we try to get people across many different languages working together, having some kind of mathematical structure behind this ultimately might be interesting. And if we're able to do that, it also lets us reflect the social structures and processes into code, as I understand it. That's where it gets beyond me. But, but I think if you can speak something represented in mathematics as a first order, then that can be reflected into generations of, of code that, that help us with these processes. Uh, 
Jordan, it was TLA plus. I, I, I as I recall, I, I was just diving recall. into that. I think it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a whole fact about whether the plus is normal script or superscript. The the right way to it is actually superscript plus. Um. Uh, so also to mention there's tech infrastructure like uh, Obsidian, HackMD, uh, Sync Thing, uh, Git, GitHub, uh, Massive Wiki Builder. And I'm forgetting the one that where I, the reason I started this bullet list was something else. Um, Maybe it's not. Um, there's another kind of background thing. I, I, someday I'll talk more about this. Um, but uh, there's a there's a structural difference between wiki. I I always wanted wiki links to end up being like highlights rather than strict links. Um, where a highlight might have multiple ways to resolve it. It's not necessarily one page. It's, and Jordan is using much, um, much more like, uh, his, his things are more like highlights than page links. So that, that's another, I, someday uh, we'll have a wiki, maybe even a massive wiki that has multiple targets um, instead of a single target. Can I ask and, a question? Yeah. Um, in first instance, it's a, for Jordan to be able to write, and but then I, I wonder, like, what's the intention towards the larger group uh, with this wiki? Um, good, good question. And that I'm reminded also of uh, what I wanted to write here. Um, so let me write that real quick. Um, start. At... That's bullet point three with under primary goals. Um, so I don't know if this is the right thing, Eric, but it's just like a hypothesis. And, and I come from a background in building, but when you're trying to build an idea, like an intention, you need you need kind of a, uh, this doesn't, this hopefully doesn't have to remain me over the long time term, but you need some kind of a architect mind that's holding the overall intention. And then you, and then you need a whole bunch of people with diverse skill sets to collaborate on all the different design expertise that's required, like in all, in all the things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you want a process for making sure those things tie together over time, right? They're architected into the total thing that would work. Um, and so I think the intention for the group is to have a full distributed, almost design build iterative process of increasing clarification about each of the functions and roles in the better world we're trying to build. Um, but, but I think we're going to need some process in place for how that all gets reconciled at each stage so it continues to fit together. Mm. And, I want to voice it. Yeah. Okay. I'm listening. You're yeah, yeah, and, and, uh, um, No, that, that's it. And, and then rather we're talking about this, just how to get it off the ground. But ultimately, that's probably like an architectural circle or team that's responsible for trying to integrate all those pieces, not an individual. So one main concern I have right now is about access rights and who can who can edit what. I don't know how, the, like because this is a different structure than if you use Wikimedia, you can have uh, roles and roles can do certain things and not other things and access certain pages and not access other pages. Is that still possible in the massive wiki owner? Uh, yes. Um, hmm. It's a little bit easier and a little bit more complex. Both. All right. Okay. No, that's that's just a concern that I, I wanted to have answered. Thank you. Um, actually, we didn't answer it very well. <laughs> no, no, but, but I, if it's I said that there is an answer. Yes. <laughs> um, then that's good. Uh, um, I think a, there's a whole long discussion about, uh, it, it's definitely very easy to give access to um, 
but but then just giving access isn't enough to make it usable for people and so massive wiki i i in a lot of ways it's easier than media wiki and in some ways it's harder okay um, uh, and another thing actually uh, is uh, not um, you can you can interact with a massive wiki really well um, and not in the massive wiki way. So that's that's almost the most important and most useful thing that we've got. And that'd be through a web interface, basically, right? That's like through. Um, uh, and and more, yes, and more. Okay, okay. I'm I'm gonna give a second question. Then I think that my help is like, could you do access rights? Could, is that something you could organize, Pete? Um, yes. And I'm tempted to answer the question at more detail, but I think I think maybe we shouldn't. No, but if, if that's possible, then there is no more concern, actually. OK, so so um, for today's meeting, it's enough to know that Eric asked the question. Pete's thought that through. It's possible. And we'll define that in a future step. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And I think and then I think it's it's like our use can help drive that. Right. We can we can kind of bootstrap that weekly in response to the emergent needs. Um, OK, so, um, so we have kind of two, two core things um, to help Jordan with. One of them is sync thing, and one of them is Obsidian. So let's start off on my screen um, and let's look up at, at Obsidian. Um, I'm going to stop share real quick because I don't know which page my, the, the, only, um, the only wiki I have open on my screen on Obsidian is actually uh, my my private one and sometimes it's on the wrong page so let me find a different one and close my private one and reshare okay so um the way i got here um so Jordan, I apologize a little bit for Obsidian. It's a little bit funky to use. Um, uh, it's not hard to use, but it's it's got things that are a little bit different than especially a Mac user is used to used to. So it's it's got some weirdness. Um, the the flip side of it is um, I you know I shouldn't I shouldn't apologize up front like that. Um, the flip side of it is Obsidian is super useful and super usable. Um, so once you get over a little bit of hump of activation energy, it's a really useful and powerful tool. Uh, and even the things that make it a little bit hard to start using are like things, it, it was designed to, to make it super usable and super powerful. And so yeah. the, the, you know, even the de deficits are, are, are pluses. Um, so anyway, uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things to note uh, over here is this bar, this vertical bar of like little controls and stuff. Um, down here is open a vault, and then uh, help, which I never use, and then settings. Um, up here um, are a few other important things we'll get to at some point. Um, so I just wanted to show you, uh, this is how I get to, this is kind of when you first get to Obsidian, it kind of looks like this. I can create a new vault um, or I can open an existing vault. Um, we don't use Obsidian Sync, um, although that's an advanced thing that we can talk about. And then over here are the various wikis I have. Um, 
And you'll see that I have a lot, uh, which is a good pattern for massive wikis. So um, there's a terminology thing. Obsidian calls them vaults. Um, Git calls them repos, which is short for repositories. Um, uh, and it, they're both the same thing, um, exactly the same thing, basically. Uh, it, and another way to think of it is just a folder with subfolders in it. Um, so then over here is the list of all the, the pages or markdown files in this wiki. Um, so I'm, I happen to be looking at the OGM wiki. Um, and you can see a bunch of these are folders. I can take folders and, and open them or close them. Um, I've also got a way to close all of the folders. So you can start at the top level and start drilling down to the one that you want. When I click on one of these, it goes to that page. Um, to, to go kind of quickly, uh, this you can look at this as basically a folder. I mean, it, it is a file and folder structure. And to kind of re, reinforce that, um, I can pop over to the Finder or the Windows Explorer view of this. Um, uh, and um, I guess I guess maybe this is a better view. Uh, this is the same list of top level things. Oh, sorry, that's my wikis. This is the same level of top level things. And then inside that is potentially subfolders. Uh, stewardship has got good subfolders. But a thing to notice here is that this is just files and folders on your computer. There's nothing, there's no database or anything else. It's just files and folders. So if I need to change something, I can do it here. I could rename this um, right here. Um, uh, if I need to you know, put this in a different folder or make a copy of it, I could drag and drop it to another thing. Works exactly like, because it is files and folders. Um, so, uh, and there's easy ways to get from Obsidian. Uh, usually you can right click and, and show in System Explorer. Another cool thing that you can do, and let me do a, a t another step here real quick. Um, on my M1 Mac, um, it turns out that Typora crashes um, regularly. Uh, so it won't start until I get to this thing. And then it's going to open a bunch of, no, yeah, maybe not. Um, another thing I can do is um, usually, you know, I can right click this or double click this in my Mac and say open or open with uh, different kinds of editors. I've got Typora set up uh, for my editor. So if I double click that, it'll open Typora. I can do the same thing over here. Um, by saying open in uh, default app. So this is Typora as well. If I change things in Typora, it's kind of constantly saving it and it will update the page in live um, and vice versa. If I change it in either one of them, it kind of updates live. A thing to notice is that Typora doesn't understand wiki links. You can type them in, but it doesn't do anything with them. Where uh, conversely, Typora knows Markdown really well, and it actually hides the Markdown when you're not on it. Um, so the other thing, a uh, couple more things about Obsidian. One of the things is um, us older people hate uh, dark mode. Um, so a really common thing to do, uh, young, younger people like dark mode and older people don't. I find. <laughs> uh, so a lot of times Obsidian starts like this, and it's actually hard for some people to use this. So one of the first things that we do sometimes is note, and, and on some computers, actually, it's even hard to find the controls because everything is dark. So you have to find settings and find appearance and then switch to light or dark, depending. Um, the settings, uh, Obsidian saves a bunch of settings like which windows are open and how big they are and even things like the light dark mode settings that gets saved per vault on your computer. So it's you need to sometimes set it for each vault and it doesn't get saved for everybody. So 
it's funny now, Bill, <laughs> thinking of Bill and me, um, I just said something which is generally true and sometimes false with sync thing. Um, if you're not careful with sync thing, it will start replicating the settings from Bill's vault over to mine and vice versa. So we try to avoid that, but um, if we can end up in that situation. Um, the other thing we use in settings is sometimes we have plugins um, and there are some really important plugins for Obsidian. Um, uh, so I think maybe the, the main one I think that's super useful, actually calendar is super useful, um, but that's more for personal use. Uh, this collapse all plugin. Uh, yeah, oh, I meant to be doing core first. Can I add to that? It, because it's a community repository and some of the plugins are really well made and very good code and others are not not that good very loudly, yeah <laughs> or not working in every device the same way so it's it depends there's a, a ton of community plugins um, community means that they were you know they're open source uh, they're written by somebody else and contributed to the commons um, and there's a ton of them and some of them are good and some of them aren't um, uh, I kind of meant to be looking at core plugins first, not that it matters, um, but um, even things like being able to search, do a keyword search is a, is a plugin that you have to turn on. Um, a backlinks is something we'll cover and that's, yes, you, you have to turn on. Maybe, maybe search comes turned on. Some of these are really important to turn on. Um, some of them aren't. Um, and then, some things they didn't implement in core plugins and they implemented, somebody implemented it. Um, so one of the things I find really useful is collapse all. And that's what I did when I had all of these things open. Um, and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm lost. Uh, this collapse all button is actually a, a third party plugin. Um, super helpful, super useful. Um, Bill, anything else? about Obsidian before we head to sync thing. And I'm kind of doing, thanks Bill. And I'm kind of doing this on my computer. I, it, it's more, well, I don't know. Um, usually I would have the person I'm teaching do it on their computer much slower. Um, but I, th I think Jordan can go pretty fast and pick this up. Um, uh, Eric's suggesting it might be good to have a test vault to find out what effect changes have and to test features. That's that's a good idea. Um, Bill and I, there's there's actually a massive uh, massive wiki developer wiki, um, and we're kind of doing that. So I guess we're doing that. <laughs> but now that I think about it, it's actually a place where we're developing massive wiki builder, and so you actually kind of want to stay away from that. Um, but it's got lots of junky pages, like this is a markdown file with no extension. Um, and well, anyway, it's got a bun bunch of junk in it, but yes, that's a good pattern to have a sandbox wiki um, and multiple sandbox wikis, uh, maybe one for yourself, maybe one for people you're collaborating with, um, developer ones, different things like that. Um, okay, so let's look at sync thing. Sync thing hey, doesn't. Hey, one thing. Yeah. Couldn't we repurpose the, uh, the massive, the sandbox, massive wiki sandbox? We totally could, except that it's, it, it, it's, it, it's uh, deployed kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Um, Don't even get, all right, stop. One of our first wikis, maybe the first wiki, was called Sandbox Wiki. Um, but the way it's named and the way it gets deployed to the web and stuff like that is not quite the way we would do it now. And so that's what I was telling Bill. It, it's a good idea, but not that one <laughs> because we sandboxed it too much. So, um, so Pete. Yeah. Okay, oh, go ahead, go ahead and say that. Uh, let's go back to HackMD. This is my embarrassing, one of my embarrassing uh, anime add addiction things. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, on this page, I started a place for tech infrastructure. So we just talked about Obsidian. 
and we're using, uh, you're soaking in it, uh, HackMD. Hack so now let's talk about SyncThing. Um, so SyncThing is an application that runs on your computer. It comes for Linux or Windows or, or Mac, probably other systems too. Um, all it does, uh, it's a complicated thing and a very simple thing. All it does is if you've got a file, uh, uh, sorry, if, if you've got a folder on your computer with a bunch of files in it and you want them someplace else, you install SyncThing. And its job is to sit, sit on your computer and sit on the other computers or your phone even. Um, and just make sure that every time you make a change in one place, it makes a change in another place. So most people would use this for maybe like, I need, um, I need my photos synced on my iPad and my phone and my computer and my, my sister's computer and, and like that. And that's mostly what people would use sync thing for. It's very much also like um, the Google Drive folder or the, um, uh, I've, I've forgotten the names of these actually. Um, yeah, Box, Google Drives. Yeah, I was just gonna, that was gonna be my dumb question I was about to ask is, um, why do we want this re reading off of like our local hard drive? Um, massive. Instead of like well, Box or. Um, the good question that I'm not gonna answer now. <laughs> okay. The, the, the big answer, um, the big important answer is SyncThing is open source. Um, and I guess, I guess I can answer it a couple things. Um, it's, it's a difference of architecture. Uh, in the olden days, we used to have centralized wikis and everybody would come to the same server and edit things. Massive wiki is inside out of that. And um, we'll go to um, Bill's, Bill and my awesome uh, conceptual diagram. Uh, so Bill started this diagram like almost as soon as we started uh, uh, Massive Wiki. Um, so rather than having everybody come to the same server, everybody gets a copy of the Wiki on their computer, um, which is a little bit strange and mostly amazingly wonderful. It's great for decentralization. It's great for privacy. It's great for redundancy. Um, uh, so it's great in a lot of ways. And then there are things that we have to deal with to make that happen and to make it easy and to make it useful and stuff like that. But, but if you think of a wiki that you're looking at, um, maybe um, the OGM wiki that we were, we were talking about, it's the blue pages everywhere. So everybody's got their own copy of the whole wiki. And then there's Git or sync thing that keeps them in sync and, and helps you share them basically. Um, so because we've got that architecture of decentralization, um, we could actually be centralizing with Dropbox or, or Box or Google Drive. And that's actually an entirely valid way to do a massive wiki. Um, because we want to use open source and because we want to be peer to peer, um, all of those other things aren't peer to peer. Sync thing is literally peer to peer. So Bill and I share wikis that nobody else shares. Um, and we kind of like it that way. Not because we have anything to hide in those wikis, but there's also no reason to involve anybody else. Yeah, so there yeah. you go. Okay. Um, so for the, the story of decentralization and sovereigns and stuff like that, it's, it's awesome. There's another odd thing that happens that's kind of, a, kind of clunky and kind of beautiful. Um, uh, so we are, we are like past time, aren't we? Um, let's go for another 13 minutes. All right. Does that sound let's good? Let's see, we're, we're past time. I had us down for 11 to, 12, 11 to 1230. So I've got 45 minutes left oh. blocked for this, if you want it. I, I love that, yes. Um, I and, was an hour and, off in my head. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, and what could be even cool, yeah, so I don't know where you plan to go, but then it could be cool to dive in and, and we could even set up like my account on your computer maybe and then you yep. could quickly dial in the settings and I could just watch that and then I could start using it this week versus me struggling through that yes okay all right that'd um, be great that was that was uh, something I wanted to get to we could even do that in 13 minutes but I'm glad that we have 45 
Um, yeah. Before we get to your computer, I wanted to show my computer. Um, okay. Again, to can kind I, of keep things going could, fast. Could I, could, I just, could I just ask one quick question? So, yeah, um, please. So I understand the benefits of entire copy of valuable things stored on a decentralized network of things that are being kept kept up to date. I understand that you've probably thought deeply about um, what happens, but so let's just say someone attacks my computer and ruins everything and then tries to sync it to the main. How does the copy of the Lionsburg meta project wiki that's on your computer know not to believe that and to save your copy and reconcile it against Bill and know that, you know, mine was corrupted. Um, great question. Um, this is actually similar to the, the questions Eric had about access control and authorization and things like that. Um, Uh, and it's the, the answer is complicated because we've got two sharing uh, technologies we like to use. One of them is Git and one of them is SyncThing. SyncThing is uh, by default kind of promiscuous. It tries really hard to make sure things get copied. Um, it's good for use in a family. The, the, the ones I rattled off, my sister, my wife, my you know, kids need copies of the family photos. I trust all of them. I don't think any of their computers is going to get hacked, even though they could. Um, sync thing is promiscuous and we and doesn't have a lot of safety in that regard. Um, the other technology we use is Git, um, and Git uh, is much safer and it's also more complicated to use. Um, uh, maybe well, so. Um, so, so then actually, I, I think our proposed, the solution that Bill and I have come to is, uh, our proposed solution is kind of a hybrid thing. Um, you use sync thing across a set of trusted, you know, trusted or semi-trusted people who could get hacked, um, for distribution. Um, and then, uh, you have one or more gatekeepers essentially, um, who can manage the complexity of Git. Um, so, uh, and, and you use both of those together. So okay. um, in the wiki that I'm contemplating that we start, you and me first, Jordan, and then hopefully more people, and then hopefully more people, yeah. um, it, it might actually end up being that there's forks of it. Um, a, fork, a fork is a copy that has, uh, that's, that's inside a different authorization domain. Mm -hmm. Is one way, one really clunky way to say it, but that's the important part for this conversation. Um, uh, the different authorization domain means that um, it's it's really typical um, in massive wiki and in open source to have lots of similar copies of the same of original starting place, but for whatever reason, somebody has decided to clone that copy. Clone and fork are kind of the same word. Um, the implication of the fork is that you can actually back clone it. You can say, hey, I want to fold my changes back into your original one. But anyway, it's, it's really common to have clones of something and for that to be okay. Um, and then the clone, each clone has a different authorization domain. So I don't, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. No, 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 it's actually, it actually makes sense. So but being a non-tech person, but trying to say back what I think you're saying, you're saying we can use these things in parallel. Maybe to start, you could be the gatekeeper that can deal with the complexity of Git. We'd be operating like a clone. And then periodically we'd be deciding we're going to back upload that back in. And then that yeah, that's that's uh, that's a really great recapitulation of what I said, and it's not quite where I was going. Our, our okay. so we would have one authorization domain, one one place, one trusted place, and we would just keep adding people to that. Um, and then the gatekeeper, somebody like me, or maybe Bill, or or whoever else wants to be, or Eric, um, uh, can run Git. What Git does. Um, 
uh, Git is actually very careful when it makes copies between each other. Um, you actually have to have a login to log into this middle thing um, from each of these. I guess you can also have a, a public one where you don't need a login. You can be anonymous, but even the the anonymous people can't can, they can't make changes. They can make they can read, but they can't write. So everybody has a login with Git, um, and then Git also makes a snapshot of every change, basically. So yeah, even yeah. if somebody completely destroys the thing, you can just back up a version and you're back. Um, so Git has uh, this this middle circle here um, is kind of a it's it kind of collapses a, a couple different things. Git is a protocol for exchanging files between different computers with um, safety, <clears throat> authorization, and versioning. <clears throat> and then um, to centralize that, you use something like GitHub um, or GitLab or Git Gitorious or Get to light. Um, some of those are commercial projects. Some of them are semi-open source. Some of them are completely open source. Uh, use a service in the middle that keeps its own copy and acts as an access control mechanism for the other things. So in the easy case, everybody's, everybody sets their computer so it automatically is logged in. And the files and changes flow back and forth to everybody's computer. Um, you still actually gate. Each person does a, they pull the content that they want new changes from everybody else, or they push the content. They want to offer the changes to everybody else, but everybody has a, a gate, you know, that you actually let the information in and out. Um, it's not really automated. Um, and then, I don't know, that's close enough for now. Can I, can, an extra question to this is like, do you, uh, mostly for you, I would say, but maybe in general. So, uh, is there any way to see like there's so many characters changed in this many documents, for instance? Because then you can um, track if there's like, really big changes and if something weird is going on. And if there's also a history of that. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, in, in much more detail than in, in exactly as much detail as you can possibly imagine. Um, that's great. That's helpful. Um, which is why software developers love Git. Um, and, and it, it actually goes both ways when I'm about to contribute my changes back to the centralizer, um, the technology allows you, and it, and it is customary for you to kind of do a review of the changes that you're going to make and say, yeah, I really do want to offer these up to the middle. Or, oh, look, I screwed up and del deleted a file or added a bunch of files that I didn't want. And so Git um, lets you review your contributed changes. So on so top of all of that one team thing, what I was trying to do with the different authorization domains is you can have multiple teams um, uh, doing the fork and pull thing where you grab the whole repository and you clone it to a whole nother team and they have different access control um, and they can make changes and then they can give those changes back or they can hoard them or whatever. So there's another level on top of this which multiplies the one team concept with a lot of safety and security with Git to a, a, another thing where you have a clone and you've you know potted it off onto an, another another completely different um, authorization domain, and then have the ability to give give parts of it back as you want. So, so there's so a Pete, couple levels of of that. So Pete, that that to, that makes sense as much as it makes sense at my current level of understanding. But I I think I'm following along. Yeah. Um, and I also just want to briefly offer that. Um, that I'm willing to go through extra work with you to get up to speed and do something right. So like, for instance, if what you just described with get an additional levels of safety and stuff is the better way to do it, um, like I'm, I'm willing to go through the effort to learn that. Or if you think we can set up these sync thing pods, it'll be better and then just have one person. So I just want you to know I'm open to thanks, learning what I need to learn. 
Um, the experience that Bill and I have had trying to get other people into the Git domain um, is uh, is that it's it's not very rewarding um, and okay. and doesn't get you much benefit. Um, so okay. it would be better if you were actually a guinea pig for the sync thing thing. Okay, um, perfect. Uh, rather than the Git thing, um, but someday okay, we should great. look at the Git thing. Um, you you would actually probably really like it. Yeah, um, it sounds. It, what it strikes me as is obviously a lot of people over a lot of projects have thought about this really hard, mm -hmm. and and it works for a reason. And mm -hmm. so um, that's that's really neat that all that infrastructure is there when we're ready for that complexity. Like it, and it um, seems like it's on. The I I have to relate also personally. Um, one of literally one of my joys in life is using Git and GitHub and that all of that collaboration technology um, to work with people um, yeah. uh, in software development, but you could also do it in text. It is a, a, just a joy to be able to be interlinking like text changes and stuff like that with very fine grained control and the it, there's this, the satisfaction that you get from playing a team sport um so playing basketball or soccer or actually for me it was also being on a sales team <laughs> yeah yeah um knowing what you're doing how everybody operates and passing the ball back and forth effortlessly you know and having all of the the kind of infrastructural skills melt away and just be in collaboration with people is is a, like one of the human joys that you can get and and get and github is like wow it's like best stuff you know just just as as much as playing basketball or as as being on a sales team or something like that Love it. i want it okay let's go <laughs> so let me show you sync thing real quick um this this diagram again is a little bit uh, misleading. It doesn't. It doesn't have sync thing, and I just des I described pretty well that we're going to have a sync thing domain and a and a Git geek gatekeeper built on top of that kind of. So I said sync thing is an application. It's a weird application because I've got it running on my computer right now and I can't see it. Um, so the way I see it, at least on a Mac, is I go up to my, um, whatever this top bar thing is called, and I find this icon um, and I click on that and I say open. And it doesn't actually open, uh, it doesn't open an application window, it opens a browser, um, which has gone to a special, um, a special address. This 127001 means my computer, and this 8384 is where sync thing lives on my computer in web space, kind of more or less. So these are, so very soon, uh, Jordan will be walking you through this. Um, uh, so here are different computers that I'm connected to or have been connected to. Um, so this is um, Mark, and I forget his name. Um, he hasn't been around uh, much, even though he was much beloved whenever he was around. Carranza. Um, what's that? Carranza. Yeah, Mark Carranza. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, to have swapped out your name, but I did. Uh, so that's Mark Carranza. Uh, this SMG965 uh, is actually his phone. Uh, so he was the one of us who tried his phone. Um, uh, this is Michael Grossman. Uh, uh, Bill Anderson is short. Uh, shortened to band um, in Lingo Land. Um, so this is Bill's computer, and his computer's name is Beckett. Um, I have, and this is Wendy Alford, of course. Um, I got to name these, uh, and I forget even if SyncThing suggested these names or if I need to type them in. It must have suggested this one. I don't think I would type it in. Um, Bill had a different, a slightly different name for his, and I've. I've changed it to be um, happy for mine. So then these are the folders on my computer that are getting synced. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of trickiness in where these get placed on your computer. Not, not technically difficult, but conceptually, you wanna make sure that you can find these things uh, with Obsidian and stuff like that. Um, so, um, 
So what we'll do is uh, get Jordan to install sync thing. He'll set it up and he'll give me the code that says who his computer is. Um, and then I'll take that code and plug it in here. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, so I will do add remote device. He'll give me his device ID um, and away we go. So that'll invite him and then we'll be syncing a, a, a folder. Before we do that, it, it makes me uh, think, um, uh, let me actually start the wiki. Um, so I'm gonna say create new vault and this is, let me back up a sec. Um, sorry to get started and then back up, but um, I, I, there's an important thing I didn't, uh, didn't talk about yet. Um, Jordan and I for a long time talk about, talked about wiki.linesburg.org um, and we spent a lot of time thinking about that and bugging people um, uh, to give us access to the, the DNS so that we could make that. Stacey, were you going to say something? Or? Yeah, I'm sorry, but is it, should we like stop recording when you're putting in like the... Um... The IDs and stuff? Yeah, because yes. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, it's a really good question. Yeah, maybe for those particular IDs. The, the, back to, um, if, if I may, um, uh, I said gatekeeper, right? Um, uh, so I, I love this, by the way, that I, I said gatekeeper. I didn't take notes about gatekeeper. Jordan did, and I am able to find his notes about gatekeeper so that I can add to them. Um, that's just um. Ob awesome and brilliant. Um, so uh, this actually belongs in a different section in this document, so we'll have to do that later. Um, uh, um, be part of the sync thing cloud, obviously. Um, run. Uh, get, well, actually, um, uh, mm, I think that's, I think this is basically it. And we could talk about what repository and version and safe means, but um, the the way that the, this gate, gatekeeper thing works, it's basically going. I, I'm going to be every day making sure that there's a backup of of the the wiki, and if somebody got Jordan or my device ID and joined the sync thing cloud and deleted all the files, we would lose that day, but we wouldn't lose everything else because I would have made sure to have backups and I would do the backups with um, uh, um, I would do the backups. So good. And, good and what are you doing season. those? What yeah. are you doing those backups with? Um, uh, It'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be doing a couple things. Um, it'll be with a git to either GitHub or a CSC git um, host. Uh, and then that's probably all I'll do actually. Um, as a practical thing, I'll probably also have a copy uh, that goes, I, I might have a copy that goes to my um, NAS, my network attack storage, my, my um, redundant, you know, external storage device. Okay, that's um, cool. So, so this is really cool, Pete. So we'll, we'll have, even if it's in really minimum viable form, 
we'll have our sync thing, like little trusted group going. Then we'll be posting that out to Git, which will start that. And then it, if I'm imagining this right, uh, like Git could eventually interface with multiple trusted sync thing groups. Is that correct? Like, so you could have, it I think could. about that properly. Yeah, it could. Um, we have a lot of flexibility for that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, we, yeah, we don't have to go to that. Yet. Um, okay. and, and a little bit of complexity or complexity, complexity. Um, so along in this tech infrastructure, um, I put start at gardens.wiki. So, um, Jordan and I were originally talking about wiki.linesburg.org and then separately I was preaching all this you know sovereigns and federation and decentralization yada yada right so and and actually multiple service providers for you know core stuff um so we I, I ended up realizing we shouldn't have a Lionsburg wiki we should have lots of wikis that are hashtag meta project if that makes sense there should be one Lionsburg web page where you go to and you, this is the start page um, Eric and I are thinking of there should be a start page and that should be a Lionsburg thing lionsburg.org thing but what it should do it should point off to Jordan's amazing wiki right and Pete's amazing wiki and Stacy's amazing wiki um, and you know some of those wikis will be people some of those will be sovereigns um, so we might start the, the wiki posse, posse sovereign I don't know um, uh, and they'll end up with, rep, you know, different sets of reputation and different focuses on what they're collecting and the semantic rules of how they work together and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, we're going to have not one Lionsburg wiki, but we're going to have, we're going to start with one and, um, we might start with kind of a sibling one of that. We might not, um, we'll start, uh, I'll have, so in start.gardens.wiki is where I would recommend that we start this wiki we don't actually have to but um so um so i'm thinking there will be um uh there'll be um peter kaminsky my personal one uh gardens.wiki um probably we could start one that called, maybe called metaproject.gardens.wiki um, but that might also be um, meta project uh, wiki posse. If that makes sense. Um, or meta project sandbox. I was trying to keep this compact, but I should have done. I can I yes, bring in, yes, um, please. remark? Uh, you have to weigh also, like if you're gonna get a lot of wikis, what creates the overview and what creates the sense of knowing to find what, knowing what is where, what to find mm -hmm. where. Mm -hmm. That's a important question for me. It's a very important question, yes. Um, and for the purposes of this, this project, we're not there yet. No, 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 but it's uh, a good one to park, I guess. Definitely. So let's, the, so, I, what I was about to do was to start the wiki and name it something. <laughs> so I wanted so to have Pete, this discussion first. So, so yeah, Pete, what, what, I was just thinking the same thing because what, what's going to happen with this meta project idea is that that's a, that's just a pointer to concept and there's going to be other pointers to concept. So since we're using the, the, uh, like Lionsburg start page. I think Lionsburg is like the mythical name that's gonna try to realize or provide some structure to, to different things. So I think if we use, if we were to look at Meta Project as like a fiscally sponsored project of Lionsburg right now, even though it's a, a thing, it's like, okay, with it, we know this thing's out there and Lionsburg has some structure and we're gonna try to help this thing recognize itself. Um, we could use, we could, if we have like the lionsburg.org forward slash meta project or whatever, that's a start page, we could set up a Lionsburg wiki with, with whatever we call that, but then a meta project version of that or whatever. 
there's there's probably conceptual things that I would place in the conceptual meta realm, meta, uh, like Lionsburg realm, before it gets into meta project. In case we also have like a meta game or whatever, it, it's like a fractal problem. Yep. But, but I agree with Eric. It's like, um, I I think Lionsburg. This is going to be a weird thing to say. I think Lionsburg doesn't want a wiki. I think it it just wants other people to have wikis. And, and the issue of, so, so you're thinking it just wants a, you, it just wants a website that points to those wikis. Is yep. that kind of what you're saying? Okay. Yep. So, so it, it's like a place that you could go find those things, but it's not gonna, yeah, okay. In, in practice, when I'm introducing somebody to the meta project in a year, it's, I, I would probably give them one wiki <laughs> um you know here's the start page here's catalyst here's the wiki and i would just say the wiki right i wouldn't be saying oh there's a thousand wikis you could go to i'd be saying there's one important wiki that you need to participate in kind of like there's one important chat channel if you're into chat here's the chat channel to go to if you're into wikis here's the wiki to go to okay. it would be a month later when i said Hey, you know, you're, in, you're really interested in soil health. It turns out that the soil health activity is really that the deep stuff is over in soil-health.gardens.wiki. It's not in, you know, the, the primary one. But I wouldn't start people, I wouldn't start people with the knowledge that there's, you know, a dozen wikis that you want to think about. I would start them with one. All right. And and then kind of the way I've been thinking of this is you don't even start them with the concept that there's a wiki, right? Because a lot of people are going to go, oh, the wiki is where I want to be, right? Because I've heard of wikis before. It's like, yeah, probably you don't, you know, think of this as a website that you go to and, and you can make comments on, you know, don't worry about learning how to do wiki. Is there okay. a comment level? Like in, in Google Docs, you can give comments and not edit the document. Is there a way for that in, in this uh, It's a good question and a longer discussion. Um, the, um, uh, let me show you a website um, uh, called the Dawn of Everything Book Circle. So this is a website, okay. right? Uh, I can I can tell you a secret that this is actually a wiki. Um, I think of it as a wiki. Most people yeah. will think of it as a website. Um, uh, I've placed here a note to people. Um, uh, consider using Hypothesis to add comments or suggest edits to this website. So, um, and that's connected to this highlight. So just like Google Docs, um, I can make anybody anybody, literally anybody, uh, if they have this tool, uh, can say, um, while you're typing, just, just quick time check, we got 15 minutes left. If we wanted to. <laughs> I got to uh, overconfident. Um, We're back to at, at 13 minutes. From. So this, there's pros and cons to this. There's pros and cons to this, um, but Yes, I intend, to, or, or we intend <clears throat> to make it so that people would use a standardized way of commenting on websites to add comments to the wiki. And I, and and, I think that's a good and, thing. And then the comments reside on the website, not necessarily in the wiki then, I guess. Or... Um, they reside in the Hypothesis Central database, and then they're viewable on the website, yes. Um, okay. So then a web a wiki maintainer would come along and and sweep these into the wiki, and on the you know the third or fourth one or the fifth one, it's like hey, I want to give you access to the wiki so you can just make edits yourself. Is that okay? Um, mm -hmm. If it's a yeah, good person, it. if it's somebody adding spam, then you know. Um, okay, mm -hmm. uh, so Jordan, let's get you set up with sync thing. So if you go to syncthing.org, I would guess. Um, uh, if we could switch and you'll screen share. We could do this two, two ways, Pete. Um, could do I'm it more offline. 
Well, no, I'm just thinking due to time, you could just, oh, actually I'll need to do it because I'm on my machine. I was thinking, so yeah. All right. Um, oh, I mean, crap, I was going to set up a wiki, but I haven't yet. Yeah. Okay, so syncthing.org. Let's set up the wiki real quick first. Um, okay. uh, can you go over time a little bit? Uh, let me check and see. You and I have a one o'clock. And you might need a break before that. Yeah, but um, Eric? I can go like five minutes over time. <laughs> okay. But, but, I, but I, I do need time between. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm yep. gonna log off and tr and trust that there's nothing paramount. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> you you hit some of the, the big ones, um, like how do you find you know what's the the central place where you can find everything, um, especially when I'm talking about there being lots of things. Um, so what are we gonna call this wiki? Um, Lionsburg is probably getting not a good name. Uh, Jordan, the the name for your writings is probably a pretty decent name. Um, I, I, I think we would probably actually separate that out into two wikis. I think there's the things that you write and probably invite other people to write with other people to write with you. And then there I can imagine pretty quickly another wiki, which is, you know, hey, here's the general general information about Meta Project that doesn't belong on the start page. Or we could start with the sandbox one. That's a different way to do it. That might be a better okay. way to do that. And, and that, I, that I could thought, be- I thought do the sandbox. That way you can just play around, make mistakes, throw things away. So I'm gonna call this meta Figure project out sandbox. what, I mean, really trying to, and, and then you can figure out what you want to formalize into having some, you know- And, and then everything we- to, Everything we do in the sandbox, we could make non-sandbox if we want. We wouldn't have to redo it, correct? Yep. It's super easy, okay. especially as yeah, so it, is to just okay. duplicate stuff and move it around. Great idea, Bill. Thanks. Um, Bill, do I need to make a folder for it? or It's been so long. I, I'm going to do it the, the way I know, the way that I'm familiar with. You're muted, Bill. Keith, Keith, let's set up. Let's set up two for fun. Let's set up a Meta Project sandbox and a and a Jordan sandbox, because uh, because I think you and I could have fruitful okay. discussions in both. Okay. So I, I heard ABD, you say I heard... a Jordan Pete sandbox. If, if I'm yeah. if I'm tracking. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I, I heard you say in the past, like if I had writings that I was going to start to progressively formalize and publish. That yep. massive wiki wouldn't be a bad place to put those. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. There's things I could write about Meta Project. There's also just writing uh, that I could start to play with in that format. So I'm thinking to uh, Meta Project Sandbox um, and Jordan Pete Sandbox, right? Uh, so, um, so I find myself a little bit uncertain how to create a new vault because there's a, a folder thing that goes on. And so I did it a, a way that I feel more safe. Um, so, and then I will open both of these as wikis uh, in Obsidian. Um, huh, I actually did want to turn on link preview, but I guess I didn't get that chance. So I'm gonna open both of them. And then these will be the ones that uh, we're syncing. And I'm going to leave them black for now for a time. So now, Jordan, uh, you went to syncthing.org. Maybe you downloaded the DMG? Okay, not yet. No. Um, projects, should I click on downloads? Yeah. Can you, are you able to share your screen uh, on the recording? Downloads. Uh, Sync thing dash Mac OS. <clears throat> this uh, is a little bit less friendly than I was remembering. Um, yeah. Under integration. Oh, right, right here, right here. Is it this? 
Uh, go up a little bit. bit where it says integrations, and then look okay. under that. There's two links. The second link is uh, syncing macOS. You know, I've gotten so far away from this, Bill, I forgot. Uh, so then that DMG file right there. Okay, so just put this. Too. Okay, great. So go down to this DMG file and click it. Yep. Okay. So and I I've think got... we're only seeing your browser. Back to let's see new share desktop share yeah. better. So then drag the sync thing icon into your applications folder like that, and then when that's done copying. I think it's done copying actually. It's, I think it's small. Um, right click on that window and then um, you want to eject the sync thing virtual disk. So, oh, right I, click I on this. You. Uh, no, right click in the background of that window and then say eject. And then, like you were doing, uh, find sync thing in your applications folder and double click what, it. What does that do when you click eject like that? Um, the the way applications are distributed are in DMG files, which is a disk image, um, a virtual disk. Um, so I, what I, I I just had you unload the virtual disk. Otherwise, it's okay. it's sitting there on your computer. Okay, got it. So, All it's right, a so... confusing thing that Mac hasn't handled well. I'm going to open this. Uh, so I think it's open now. <laughs> so if you go up to your, yeah, uh, up in your um, top bar there, yeah, I see it, you've got right, the little yeah. icon. Okay, this is the secret thing that you don't know it's running. So yeah, click, exactly. on, click on that. Get a little... uh, right click on it and then say select open. And it's going to open in your web browser. Getting spinning Mac symbol over it. You see, you see a, this the spinning beach ball. Yeah, we got a spinning beach ball over it. Yeah, oh. spinning beach ball over it. Um, try clicking away from it and then right click it again. Oh. It's like Still it's spinning stuck. beach ball over it. Or maybe double click it. I'll bet it's some weird Mac permissions thing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> lots, of, lots of flashing. Okay. Yeah, so it's okay. online, open. Yeah, online means that it's it's able to connect to the net. Uh, you could actually you can quit that whenever you want, um, but you you could also leave it running locally and stop it from connecting online. Um, uh, this is up to, to you. Just... Uh, we can you, talk you about it more. I don't know what it means. Just tell me what to do. Um, do you care if you, your computer sends some information about your anonymously uh, about how you you know that you're using sync thing and and uh, folder sizes and app versions and stuff? Uh, why don't you be uh, safe and say no? Just say no. Just if you okay. got to think about it too, or then for me, if you got to think about it for five seconds, it's like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, great. Okay, so we got um, this now. So this green box, you only see one time kind of. Uh, you you can, can actually put a username on, username password on this control panel. Uh, you don't need to probably, so you can just click OK. So it won't have one. OK. Um, So we're getting close to you having a device ID. Um, and I think we don't want to share your device ID. So how about if you stop screen sharing um, and then we'll walk you through it kind of blind. Um, 
We could also stop recording if that's easier. Either way, yeah, yeah. Um, the recording yeah. is okay. Um, okay. So I'm so I'm on here. I got default folder and shared. Uh, so you want to do in the upper right the actions menu, and then there's a thing that says show ID. Okay, got it. Uh, and then there's a QR code and then a long string of letters and numbers and dashes. Uh, yeah. Copy that long string of letters and dashes and numbers. And um, uh, if Mattermost isn't too hard, uh, send it to me in Mattermost. Um, in, and if you don't mind, I think we're going to add Bill to this real quick too. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so I'm going to, I should be able to paste that. Let me try that one more time. Show ID. Yeah, it looks really super geeky. And once you get it set up, it's like really, I mean, it's, it is geeky, but it's really kind of invisible. It becomes invisible. Yeah, and it seems to be, you know, modulo a few of Eric's concerns about, whoa, man, how secure are we? <laughs> Which is totally gonna, the right the right question to be thinking of. I wonder why this is not um, usually on my. When I try putting it in the, if I put it in the chat, both you and Bill could do it, right? Yeah, yeah that'd be that's great. Um, yeah, so then we won't publish this chat. Right. Um. So I'm grabbing it. Wait a second, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna add it and hold it. Damn it. Oh yeah. Copying from Zoom chat is kind of weird. So I, I actually pasted my own device ID into the into sync thing. And it's like, I already have that one, dude. Um so okay, I'm Jordan. adding remote device here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Jordan, what's What's your computer's name, if you don't mind? MacBook is would be fine. What? How do you identify the computer you're sitting at so that I can identify it to you as different from another one that you might sit at? Um, it's sync thing. Sync thing has it identified as Jordan's dash MacBook dash Pro. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm going to call it on my computer, I'm going to call it Jordan's MacBook Pro. Um, and probably people will see that if I screen share this again, I hope that's okay. I could, I could actually name it something else, right? Like top secret, you know, um, friend or something like that, but I did. You're actually in charge of our internet security, Pete. So it's totally up to you. I'm trusting you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to use the that's same thing for Jordan's device name. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so now you'll see that I've got a um, uh, you know we're we we could connect. Um, so now I'm going to add two folders uh, here. Um, okay, so I've got um, Beckett .local wanting to add. So that's I'm me. Click add that device. Um, and hopefully I general, I got a device ID, Beckett.logo. Okay, I'm going to click save. And then I've got a Syncritia. Yeah, that's Thanks. me. Pete, that device, save. Okay, uh, Beckett.logo and Syncritia. So now my show is connected for you. Um, LF, uh, oh, yeah, PWD. Um, so what I'm doing is figuring out where, what, what folders to share. So add a folder. Um, I want this and this. I can go a few more minutes, but I should be off by like 1240. Okay. I will at least we get seven. Things for that. Seven and counting here. Um, 
Uh, okay, I'm happy with this. I'm going to say save, and then Bill, I'm going to grab. Um, you didn't give it a label, did you? Uh, I guess not. I thought it would default to the name, but I'll, I'll just change that. Uh, so I'm going to grab sync and thing, edit, um, ignore patterns, and grab this. Yeah. Uh, so then I'll go back to this, edit, um, ignore patterns, mm -hmm. file versioning, trash can, right. general meta project sandbox. Yes. Okay, so then, and actually I go, I have to go in here one more time and click edit and then share. Uh, so Jordan's MacBook and Dan Becker. Um, and I trust you, so I'm not gonna enter an encryption password. So now, um, Jordan, you should have another pop-up that says, you know, Syncretia wants to share a folder with yep, you. Got that, okay, great. Um, so I'll just click. Okay, so before I click save, I have general sharing, file versioning, ignore patterns, advanced. I need to do anything yeah. with those. Why don't you why don't you share your screen? Yeah, this is where you really gotta put in the right directory. Otherwise it's just gonna be at the root. It sounds so simple. Good thing I didn't good thing I yeah, didn't uh, no, click save, you know. It really it could have been uh, disastrous. Space there, the like <laughs> it's really important. <laughs> Can you find these programmers and gonna like twist their little necks? <laughs> uh, so what do you want to do is go down to folder path there and after yep. sukit slash you want to add something there. Uh, you want to say capital D documents and then a slash and then Oops, wait, 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 hold on. Same thing we like to access files in your documents folder. Yeah. Apple's okay. so careful nowadays. Okay, so, um, so not so much. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, and then for us. capital S sync thing. Sorry. And then a flash. Yep. And then I think Bill pretty much he can he I guess uh, uh, Jordan, if he clicks ignore patterns, what does it say? Uh, okay, so we can't even do them yet. Um, so that was enough. That I, uh, I can click. It, there is a toggle there. Yeah, do that. That that's great. Okay, so click um, toggle. Okay. So then click save. That one directory thing is super super important, but once you do it, it, it seems like it was easy and no no big deal. So click save. Um, I'm going to. I think I got chat, this. I think. <laughs> I think I got it in the right directory. <laughs> um, Should I click save again? Uh, not yet. Uh, you're going to okay. paste a bunch of stuff in there. Okay. So copy what's in um, chat. Zoom chat and paste it in there. This is like say, say save. This is great. I'm such a. This is the most. Uh... Okay, so I think where we're we're where we're going to get to is not having you run Obsidian yet. I right. hope that doesn't make you sad. Um, but uh, what what we what we'll do is set it up so that you can see the file that I created in my Obsidian, <laughs> which is huge. Uh, so I'm going to go to this and I'm going to call this file readme and I'm going to make a single hash and make the same thing. Actually, maybe I'll make this to one. Well, I'll make this the same for now. We'll change it later. And then I'll put the uh, conventional programmer greeting and I'll click save. And then Jordan, you should be able to open up. Uh, I'll stop screen sharing. If you could screen share again. Back to Zoom, back to screen share, back 
here, Arctic Safari. Yeah. Yep. Um, I wonder if you. Mm -hmm. if, I got it. I can see it. Yes. You know, actually, so close. Now, now you kind of can forget about SyncLing again until I actually, I'm going to send you another thing. Uh, you'll want to open up SyncLing again. I'm going to share Jordan Pete uh, sandbox with you, but I'm going to do that later today. Um, I can also so just, just, I can, I can also just create like, yeah, whatever. I can also just use this. So. Uh, go and go and find her um, and look in documents, sync thing, uh, meta project sandbox. So I should be able to spotlight search uh, meta just project like, sandbox. Uh, you, you, sh you can go to, yeah, you can. You should be able to just open finder unless that's okay. not a thing that you do. Yeah, maybe. Finder. It's short for research. Recents. It uh, does we're not, not show we're only up in seeing recents. Your, we're only seeing your Safari, which is fine. Don't. Okay, doc documents sync thing meta project sandbox readme.md. I can open that now. Yay! Um, so, um, it, when you that open says, that, does it, says it open what's, in text? It opens. No, it opens in. Uh, it says what's new to, in Mind Node. Oh no! It wants to oh, open no. a mind map. No, uh, you probably don't no, want to do that. No. So right click on it and open it and text set it. Or right click, and, open with. And so, hold on, I'm trying to close this thing. Let's go. Do you want to keep this new? I got one more uh, minute to the time. Document, time. delete. Oh, man. So I, I apparently have like a thing here. We'll have to fix that, Pete. OK, open with. Uh, yeah, my note is the default. So we'll have to fix that. Text edit, got that. And now I got hello world. So and I can say there. hello Pete some. and Bill. And save it. And then do I save that just by closing it? Uh, control Either S, way. I can command S. Yeah, command S. Okay, command S. So I command S it. Um, and it should pop up here soon. Um, I'm Ooh, also going to. Yeah, there it. you go. Nice. Oh, look how, look how advanced we are. We, we are now connected and ready to change the world. Okay, Stacy's ready next. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, next next step is uh, getting Obsidian set up and for another yeah. call. Well, that, this is amazing. So um, this is all new to me. Um, so I hope I was not uh, too slow with it, but um, this is really cool. So I'm really looking forward to learning this mode and please, please be patient with me. Uh, as I get up to speed. Uh, you, you were great, Jordan. Um, I, yeah. And I apologize for blathering on too much, but a lot of it was important blather. So. Well, it was, and I and I took notes of all the important blather. Thank you. Um, so I guess, and now with this thing up, we have a place where we can start storing these HackMD notes, right? So when we note take together with yeah. these, start going in there. Yeah. You can you start see that using it as a minute? repository and it'll be shared amongst the three of us. I, I can do that in another minute or... Um, or we could stop because we're over time. Yeah, I think we should time boundary. We should work on that. Yeah. Time I, okay. So, so Pete, you can, um, I guess we should just, we just need to schedule time on uh, Monday, I guess, right? Uh, for the next uh, steps. Yeah, or, sounds you, good. or you can. Yep. The same, th thanks for, um, thank you guys for being patient. Thanks for your willingness to coach me. Um, I think this is going to be amazingly useful. I'm really excited. I'm really excited, actually. So thank you. Thank you both. I'm uh, excited to collaborate with welcome. you on this. Yeah. yeah, really appreciate it. So I just saved those to the, the wiki. And now, uh, Jordan, you'll have it within a few seconds. So now there's awesome. a wiki page. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Boom. We're getting so cool now. All right. Beautiful. Well, I, I look Thanks forward all. to our next call. Um, Pete, let me know what times you could. Um... Uh, I think we'll do the when to meet thing and hope to pick up some other folks. OK, great. If great. that's okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Adios. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Adios. See you soon. Okay. Thanks, Bye. viewers.